This is Inform TV 100. Happy Black History Month. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, the grift, the downward, downward spiral of Black Republicans from the party of Lincoln to the cult of Trump by Clay Kane. I recommend this book. It is just so informative and just I, as I read this book, I truly cannot put this book down. It's so very important information in there that any person should uh, need to know. This is a book for everyone. It's just not a book for one particular person. Of course, it's a, we have a, you know, there's an interest uh, for the people that are affected uh, by these black Republicans, but it is a book. For everyone. Please get The Grift by Clay Kane. I have the paperback. I have the I have the hardcover and I also have it loaded on my Kindle. So I can read The Grift whenever wherever I go. So as we left off uh, in the other uh, video so this is part Four. Part four of the grift. I've made two other videos pertaining to the book. So where the the video left off, I was talking about um, reading the the book, the self autobiography by Frederick Douglass, and then. I started on the graph where Clay Kane talks about an ex-friend of his who switched parties and became a uh, Republican, and he felt like he did that to get the benefits of switching over to the party. So Clay Kane uh, he essentially said that um, he would never call his ex-friend or he doesn't believe in um, people calling uh, you know, black uh, African Americans or black people who are not do not operate in the best interest of their race. He doesn't believe in calling them that. He doesn't, and I'm going to, this is where we, where I, I stopped at, uh, on the graph. This is, uh, by Clay Kane. He says, I have since, uh, seen him, his friend and others labeled with slurs like uncle Tom or claims they are no longer black. While we are no longer friends, he did not cease to be black. It's important to stress that black Republicans should not be demonized as Coons, Uncle Toms, or Orioles. All language that I reject, all which are language that I reject. Being a Republican does not erase black identity. Denying their blackness dismisses and simplifies the threat. I prefer taking a cue from legendary Arthur Zora Neale Hurston. All my skin folks aren't my kin folk. In black communities, terms like house Negroes or having a plantation mentality are used to label people who are considered sellouts. It is important to explore the historical background of these terms and why they should not be used to describe someone on either side of the political aisle. During chattel, chattel slavery, when enslaved people were plotting a revolt, the prevailing fear wasn't just that the white enslaver would discover their plan. It was that another enslaved person would betray them. Their fears had a strong basis in reality. In Richmond, Virginia, Gabriel Proser was planning an uprising in an area where black 
people outnumbered whites. After months of preparation, Prosser hoped to end slavery in the Commonwealth by leading hundreds of armed enslaved people to take control of the Virginia state. Armory and the Virginia state capital. The day the revolt was to take place, August 30th, 1800, two enslaved people told their white master and it was all over. Prosser, his two brothers, and over 20 others were hanged. The reward for the two enslaved people who told their master, they were gifted freedom. 26 black people were killed and countless others probably tortured for two black men to be granted their freedom. Denmark Versi, a free black man in Charleston, South Carolina was inspired by the Haitian Revolution, which resulted in Haiti becoming the first black southern nation in 1804. In 1822, after over a year of strategizing with enslaved and free black people, the plan was to attack the Charleston Meeting Street Arsenal, retrieve the weapons, and sail a boat to Haiti. The uprising was failed after two enslaved people, George Wilson and Joe LaRoche, warned their master, Wilson, professed loyalty to his master and enjoyed an unimpeachable reputation among blacks and whites. These betrayals are behind the accusations of plantation mentality or house Negro. The willingness to trade an unimpeachable reputation for the lives and freedoms of people who look like you. It's central that we do not lose track of the context that shaped these decisions. The enslaved people who sold out Denmark Versi and Gabriel Prosser lived in a state of fear. They were controlled and weakened by a system that prevented them from seeing a future. That's why I nixed the notion that Black Republicans have a slave mentality to explain away current Black Republican grifters as merely having a slave mentality minimizes their conscious and corrosive schemes for power. They are trapped in a system of slavery. The fact that they, they, are, they are not trapped in a system of slavery the fact that they are free to choose to act in ways that elevate themselves over the needs of the rest of their community is what makes them so vile, not enslaved. These terms have a parallel on the other side of the aisle. Black Republicans often spat democratic plantations to flip the accusation back on their opponents. This is equally disgusting. The language is not only wildly racist, but perverts the history of enslaved people in the United States. I am not calling for every black person to think alike or to vote Democrat, especially in local elections, nor do I believe Democrats are above critique. The Democratic Party is not free of racist policies or supporters. Considering conservatism is evidence in the ideology makeup of both major political parties. That said, as of January 2023, over 53 Black men and women serve in the House of Representatives, 49 as Democrats. There is little to no diversity in the Republican Party. Currently, there isn't one Black Republican woman and only four Black Republican men. Burgess Owens of Utah, Byron Donalds of Florida, John James of Michigan, and Wesley Hunt of Texas are in the House of Representatives. The one and only Black Republican woman to hold a seat in the House is Mia Love of Utah. She was voted out in 2018. In the U.S. Senate, Tim Scott of South Carolina is the only Black Republican and only the third Black Republican in the Senate's history. The Black Republicans of today, regardless of how much the GP, 
GOP selectively references Frederick Douglass are not what I call Douglass Republican leaders who place black interests at the forefront, which require building and being held accountable within black communities. The black Republicans of today do not foster conditions, coalitions in black communities. They're building whether in the Senate, the House representative, or the media, is for the support of white conservatives, especially the white men who are power players in the GIP. As you learn in this book, those who attempted to organize alliances with black communities suffered political consequences. Another distinction is that the original black Republicans fought for and supported policies that were race conscious or race specific. Today's black Republicans call for race neutral or colorblind legislation. Those who don't quickly lose power. There is no space for black people who strive to advance black interests in the GOP. This is my uh, reading for today. The wonderful book, The Grift, The Downward Spiral of Black Republicans from the Party of Lincoln to the Cult of Trump. I highly recommend this book. Uh, this is Inform TV 100. Uh, God bless you as we celebrate Black History Month and we celebrate this book, The Grift. The Grift. The Downward Spiral of Black Republicans from the Party of Lincoln to the Cult of Trump. Please hit the like button and please hit the notification button so you can get the videos. You can get notified. You won't regret it. Inform TV 100. We love you. We pray for you. God bless you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and Happy Black History Month. Take care and bye. I have to read my Joe Madison quote before I go. And I'd like to say the great Joe Madison, he said, what are you going to do about it? What Joe Madison refers to is that only ch to change, to make change occur, that change only occurs when people take a form of action. Bye.